Miss Melinda here, your spiritual advisor from MissMelinda.com, here to bring you today part four in our series on shadow work with the tarot. So quick recap, shadow work is when we work to uncover those hidden aspects of ourselves that our ego hides from us. These hidden aspects can become destructive parts of ourselves, which are harmful to ourselves and harmful to others. When we use shadow work with the tarot, we are consulting the cards to help us uncover those aspects of ourselves that are hidden from us, those aspects that we can't readily see, and those aspects that are going to assist us with unlocking our challenges, unlocking our blockages, and becoming more authentic, more fulfilled, more whole, and acquiring more fulfillment and more joy and more connection in life. So we'll be discussing the particular interpretations of specific cards, discussing the shadow side of those cards, and how to apply that shadow meaning to our own shadow work and our own self-growth. So the first card is the Ace of Rods, and the Ace of Rods is all about bringing in clarity. The Ace of Rods is all about a purified new beginning. I have another deck in which the Ace of Rods is actually the Ace of Brooms, and the picture is just of a fiery ball of flame, and I love that interpretation or that depiction of this card because to me, this represents a period of purification. It represents going through the fire in order to transform and coming out the other side to this fresh new beginning. So the Ace of Rods can be communicating to us in our shadow work that we really need to take a fresh perspective on our self-growth, that we need to pay attention to our intuition and we need to pay attention to our inspiration. The Ace of Rods can very much be applied to claircognizance or sudden flashes of ideas, sudden flashes of inspiration and intuition that pops into our mind like a light bulb moment, a flash of knowing, a flash of inspiration. The Ace of Rods can be telling us in our shadow work that we're having moments of intuition or that we will soon have a flash of recognition that shows us what we need to pay attention to in our self-growth, that shows us what it is we are hiding from ourselves. And the Ace of Rods is telling us how we can tune in to our own intuition or our own spiritual connection to receive those messages and what way the messages may come to us and in what way we may be able to decipher more about our shadow work or our shadow side. In addition to that, the Ace of Rods can very much be directing us to a spiritual cleansing, letting us know that in order to assist our own growth, in order to see more clearly, in order to move forward more easily, we may be assisted with this process through spiritual cleansing, spiritual purification. So the Ace of Rods can actually be communicating to us that all of the work that we need to do is not necessarily 100% emotional or 100% psychological. It can also be energetic. It can also be metaphysical. The Ace of Rods can be pointing us towards an energy clearing that is needed, something spiritual, metaphysical, or energetic that is keeping us blocked or that needs to be cleared, needs to be needs to be cared for in order for us to really um, remove the blockages from our path, remove the blockages from our psyche, see things clearly, and move forward in our self-growth. So some interesting messages with the Ace of Rods in our shadow work. And the next card is the Six of Swords. And the Six of Swords is all about healing. It's all about moving forward, but it's literally about movement as well. So the Six 
Six of Swords tells us that if we want to move forward in our self-growth, in the work that we're putting in on ourselves, then we're going to also have to match that with physical actions in the real world. The Six of Swords tells us in this context that if we want to continue to uncover what needs to be uncovered, if we want to continue to delve into this growth and to really see things as they truly are, then we're gonna have to back that up with some of the actions that we take in the real world, the decisions that we make, and the way that we physically move forward. So in other words, this means that our actions and our decisions may not be in alignment with our intention for growth and that we need to pay attention to that. This could also mean that we need to physically move, we need to physically make changes, or we need to make changes in the practical world, in the real world, um, such as in money, in finance, in business, in work, um, in our homes, these kinds of things that relate to um, sustained earthly energy, the things that help to keep us secure and give us a strong foundation in our daily lives. There may be something there that needs to be changed or a new decision that we need to make or a new direction we need to take in those areas of our lives if we want our actions and our decisions to be fully in alignment with our intentions for growing through shadow work. So big, big sign that our actions and our intentions need to be in alignment and that we need to be taking action in the everyday world and in the practical world in addition to this intention that we have set for our spiritual and personal growth. The temperance card is here to let us know that our shadow work is wrapped up in our balance. The temperance card is here to let us know that we need to have our actions balanced. Very much like the, the Six of Swords, this can definitely be about balancing our decisions and our actions, making sure that our thoughts, our decisions, our actions, our intentions, all of these things are actually in alignment. The temperance card also very much indicates that healing is needed. And this is not simply spiritual or metaphysical healing. In this case, this can also mean that emotional and psychological healing is needed. And it can also mean that we need to seek assistance from others. We need to seek help when we need uh, this kind of healing. The temperance card can indicate that it's a good time for us to seek help from other professionals and allow them to assist us through this process. And the temperance card is a good reminder that we all need some help sometimes and that help is available to us and that our healing can take place in a much smoother, much easier way when we allow ourselves to have faith that help is available to us and that it will be useful for us and we allow ourselves to rely on that help. And with the Temperance card, just like all of these cards, just like the Six of Swords and the Ace of Rods, you will also need to pay attention to the surrounding cards. The surrounding cards, depending on what kind of a spread you use, may have some really significant signs that help to hone in on these meanings. The next card is the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands or Ten of Rods tells us that we're carrying a heavy weight. So we need to assess what that burden is. When this card comes up, there may be other cards around it that indicate this is either an emotional burden or this is a physical burden. But most often with the Ten of Wands, the burden is going to be responsibilities that we've taken on that are not our own. So we could be carrying the burden of trying to make other people happy. This means that we may be manipulating our personality in a way that pleases others. Perhaps we're playing roles for them within relationships. Perhaps we're acting in a, a mode of behavior that is outdated. This could come into play in our relationship roles within our family, um, acting in a way that is outdated for us, behaving in a way that is outdated for us or in a way that is no longer needed, maintaining roles within family structures so that we please them, so that we don't upset, upset that balance 
whatever the case may be, the Ten of Rods very much indicates that we're taking on something that is not our burden to carry. It's not our responsibility. And it also indicates that if we don't figure out what to let go of, we're going to be in trouble soon because the load is simply too heavy for us. We're not going to be able to continue to carry this load. So you can see the Ten of Wands as being a warning in that way. Sometimes when we take on burdens for other people, um, it's about not upsetting them. It's about not pushing, being afraid that we're going to push them towards emotional growth or uh, spiritual or mental growth that they're not ready for. Sometimes it's about being afraid that if we grow or if we challenge the people around us in any way, then it's going to cause um, a negative consequence. It's going to cause negative consequences from their behavior or it's going to cause negative consequences in our relationships. So when this comes up in our shadow work, we really need to reassess what kind of responsibility we're taking on for other people. What are we taking upon ourselves? What are we carrying for other people that we really need to let go of? The next card is going to be the Ten of Swords. And the Ten of Swords is definitely about uh, destruction. It's about betrayal. It's about just feeling that you have been trampled upon. It's about being wronged. It's about being lied to. It's about, you know, all, all of those things that other people can do to us when we love them, when we put our trust and faith in them, and when they turn out to not be what we thought or when they make big mistakes that break our hearts, right? So this is definitely issues of trust. It's also issues of heartbreak. And the indication is that the shadow material you're dealing with has its roots in some kind of deep hurt, some kind of deep pain. And sometimes this may be saying, the pain that's coming up for you now relates to the past. Sometimes you may be thinking that the pain that is coming up for you is in a direct response to something you're experiencing now, but in reality, it's bringing up a domino effect of pain that's coming from a past issue, a trauma, a betrayal, a serious heartache, a serious issue of trust broken, something like this which hasn't been fully healed, which hasn't been mended. So in shadow work, there are instances um, that we can call triggers and there are other instances that we can call shadow eruptions when our shadow side kind of peeks through and shows us a clue as to what's really going on, what we're really hiding from ourselves. And sometimes that is in the form of overreacting out of, you know, from a genuine place, actually feeling in a way that is an overreaction to what's happening in front of you. So this could mean that you perceive that, um, you know, someone told you a white lie and you perceive it to be a giant betrayal and you really question if you ever want to talk to that person again, even though the white lie that they told you in their mind was meant to protect you and they had no ill intent behind it. Yes, you have every right not to be lied to and to make that clear in your relationships, but also this could be an example of a situation where your hurt is really about something from the past and not actually about what's happening to you now and that in order to fully heal you need to go back and heal from that past incident so that is a very um likely message with the ten of swords that there is a past incident of pain that needs to be healed and that you will keep feeling this over and over again and you will keep getting into situations where you continue to react and that this shadow material will prevent you from wholly experiencing your connections and wholly experiencing your relationships and wholly feeling love and joy because you will continue to overreact to small things and you will continue to feel heartbroken uh, and, and it will not allow you to feel 
whole and it will not allow you to feel connected. So big message with the Ten of Swords. The next card and the last card is the Five of Cups. And the Five of Cups has a very clear message for shadow work. The message is you're being negative. <laughs> you're, you're focusing on the negative. You're focusing on the loss that you have endured in the past. And you have so much to be grateful for, so much to be thankful for, so much to be joyful for, so much to celebrate and so much to be happy about in your life now but you are going to continue to miss out on that if you are consistently held back by the loss that you have endured in the past so the five of cups is really going to depend greatly upon what's exactly going on in your life as well as what the other cards are telling you right you have to apply this to you as an individual apply it to your individual spread but the overall message is that past loss is going to hold you back so again healing from the past and it may be that you are stuck in a negative mindset where you know that you're constantly telling yourself well it doesn't matter what happens now because i'm just going to lose it just like i did in the past or you're stuck in a, a negative way of thinking or believing in yourself that you're not even aware of believing that something is wrong with you and that's why you experienced this loss in the past believing that the universe doesn't love you or that god doesn't love you or really having a deep-seated belief that you are not worthy of love these kinds of things and it all relates back to this loss so with shadow work a lot of it is about these beliefs that we build around incidents so it's not even specifically the incident itself that we're often trying to uncover M many times what we are uncovering is the belief patterns the thought patterns the modes of behavior that we have developed as a result of it and that's what we're hiding from ourselves. We're hiding from ourselves our defense mechanisms. We're hiding from ourselves our negative and destructive beliefs, our negative thought patterns. We're hiding from ourselves the way that we have put into place psychological mechanisms and emotional mechanisms that actually hold us back. So usually we remember the incidents that happen. We know that it happened and we know that it caused us pain, right? But what we don't know about is what kind of belief we've built around it, what kind of behavior has arisen out of it, you know, what kind of thing we have put in place that is really causing us destruction in our lives or preventing us from fully feeling or preventing us from fully being happy or being fully ourselves, living an authentic life. These are the kinds of things that we uncover with shadow work and we can certainly use Tarot to assist us with that. Thanks for watching and many blessings. Share the video, like it, and subscribe. Be well.